Frankly, my dear, I... <sighs> it's the show. Frankly, my dear, I would fly you to the moon and back if you'd be, if you'd be my baby. Hey, Sam, what did the fish say when it hit the brick wall? Dan? Yes. Hey, Sam, what do you call a fish with no eye? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Cooking with Puppets. Today, you're gonna learn how to do good rice, cause that's an important skill. And I'm gonna start off with what might seem like a cheat, but I promise you that it isn't. Buy an electric rice cooker. They start at 10 bucks for a basic model and go up to hundreds of dollars for the ones that do lots of fancy things. Buy whatever you can afford. There's no shame in having a cheap rice cooker and it'll save you more time and effort than the money you spent, I promise. Now that that's out of the road, measure out your rice. This is a cup of uncooked rice and will serve about two people. It's also the minimum amount of rice that most cookers can handle. Dump it into a sieve or colander with a bowl beneath it and cover it well with cold water before mixing and polishing the grains together in the water. What this does is cleans the rice, removing the surface starches, preventing clumping and giving you a fresher taste. You'll need to repeat this step about three to four times until the water is mostly clear. In Korean and Japanese culture, the first lot of water is sometimes used as a cleanser for the face, so if you're looking to try something new for your skincare, you can reserve that first milky water in a bowl. After your rice is clean, cover it well with cold water again and let it sit for at least half an hour, and no more than 8 hours. Since cooking rice is all about the absorption of liquid, this gives the rice a head start on cooking, and yields a better texture at the end. Dump out that water and let the rice sit dry for 15 minutes. This step is optional, but if you're cooking something like Hainanese chicken rice or Takikome Gohan, it allows the rice to better absorb the flavours of the stock you'll cook it in. Now, put the rice in the bowl of your rice cooker and add water. This bit is tricky because the exact amount of water to add changes in proportion to the amount of rice you're cooking. A lot of people go by the guide that one part rice to two parts water is fine, and this is okay, but may produce slightly mushy rice at lower quantities as the amount of water decreases as you cook less rice. Start the rice cooker and let it do its thing, and once it's finished, and this bit is important, turn the rice cooker off and let the rice sit for 10 to 20 minutes. This extra steaming time is important for letting the moisture distribute evenly throughout the cooked rice. After that, fluff it with a rice paddle or fork, although a rice paddle should come with your rice cooker, and then it's ready for eating. Frankly, my dear, I hope the next sound out of your face hole is the epic sax tune on mute for 10 hours. Oh, oh wow. wow. It's full of candy. <laughs> That's why it resisted so much. That's why it resisted Can't so much, and it's full of candy. Please don't cut me. <laughs> You're just okay. I was, was going to say. Eat it all, eat it all, we've got to be careful how 
hamburger. Eat it all! Would you be nervous so I can come to you? So you can come to me rather than the other way you were? Thank you. Eat it all. <laughs> no, I don't like how it gets sweet. Right, my favourite part! It's, it's not right. Right. It's just not how food should work. Here it is. Have you ever had mm, chocolate with salt on it? Yes. That's salty and sweet. What about salted caramel, huh? 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 <laughs> Screw the salted caramel. I want these, I want these again. You're a food heathen. <clears throat> I can't handle this. I think salty and sweet is a good combination. Too bad. You should tell us what you think about salty and sweet in the comments because I never tell people to comment because I'm not <laughs> supposed to instigate violence. <laughs> tell him that he's wrong. No! Yes. Liar. Where you gonna go? Because I'm gonna get my fisty cuffs on and me, 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 Bye. Bye. <laughs> Frankly, my dear, I really care quite a lot about what you think. A couple of days ago, a new service launched and I've been testing it out, and I'm really keen on it, so I thought I'd give you a heads up. Jump is a cloud streaming video game service for indie titles. It's like the Netflix of indie games, basically. From what I've experienced so far, it's really fluid, and the launch catalogue is phenomenal. Just like with Netflix, nothing downloads to your machine except for the initial Jump application. All of the saves are cloud account based, and it's only 10 bucks a month. There are currently 60 games on the service, with the promise of 6 to 10 new games per month. And if you're not fully convinced, you can sign up for an obligation-free 14-day trial without the need to enter your credit card details. If you're keen, head on over to playonjump.com and have a look. Frankly, my dear, I find the name Frankly to be a little odd. Where did you say your parents were from again? When we asked you what genre of music you found the most purple out of thrash metal, R&B, country, and progressive house, you hands down said R&B, which I don't know why that was even an option because it's completely obvious. Of course R&B is purple. What other color would it be? Yellow? I don't think so. Of course, then we have to ask, what color are the other musical genres anyway? Last week I told you about how I hate zombies and then immediately proceeded to sing lavish praise for a game featuring them in a starring role, and I've learned something from doing that, so there'll be no more zombies this week. Instead, I want to let you all know that I am absolutely petrified of clowns. Like, irrationally so? Which is why this week, of course, I'm giving you a look at Dropsy, a point-and-click adventure where, of course, our hero is a floppy-shoed, grease-paint-wearing... clown. Developed by Tendershoot and a Jolly Corpse, and published by Devolver Digital, Dropsy was released in 2015. Without spoiling anything, you play as the titular Dropsy, a circus clown who seems to have a developmental disorder, as he's more like a very large child than an adult in his worldview, his problem-solving strategies, and his responses to external stimuli. In the opening scene, you see your circus tent catching fire, and everyone blames you, likely because you're an easy scapegoat. Flash forward a few years and you start a nice normal day, helping out your father and winning over the hearts and minds of the townsfolk who are distrustful of you at best. Of course, when you meddle in the affairs of so many people, something interesting is bound to happen. And the story of Dropsy takes you... places. Like, places I didn't expect it to go at all. It was genuinely engaging and I felt like I had a genuine stake in trying to clear my reputation and, well... Telling you anything more would be spoiling. One of the most interesting aspects of Dropsy as a gaming experience is that it uses no recognisable language in any area. Dropsy can't read, and so, of course, signs, newspapers, and other written communication is meaningless to you. But it goes deeper than this, demonstrating what it's like to think more in concepts than in words. All dialogue in Dropsy is portrayed through the use of a standard set of easy to understand symbols. For example, instead of saying, your father, you'll see a speech bubble containing your father's face. Not only does this transcend the language barrier that many games experience, but it makes for a really interesting experience as well, as you're faced with the struggle that many people have of trying to interpret what someone is saying to you when you don't operate on the same wavelength as each other. I think that one of the things that sold me on Dropsy was the fact that it feels like such an overwhelmingly positive experience. 
The story might have its sad moments, for sure, and it's not without conflict, but overall it's about seeing that people are experiencing some kind of hardship and doing your best to improve their lives. You're never malicious in your actions, even if you are sometimes a tad amoral. But anything you do that might be considered illegal is, from Dropsy's perspective, necessary to improve the well-being of the people he cares about. Plus, you get to hug people. Like, you get to hug so many people. And people, for the most part, are genuinely happy when you hug them. The message here is that one person can make a difference, no matter how misunderstood they might be. And sometimes, that's a message I need to hear. That's why, with its beautiful and at times bangin' soundtrack, wonderfully bizarre and expressive characters, beautiful scenery, clever puzzles, and just... just its general sense of warmth and positivity, Dropsy is an experience that, if you're into point-and-click adventures, you really need to check out for yourself. You can get the basic version on Steam for $10, or the warm, damp hug version with a soundtrack and a 100-page ebook for $20. Frankly, my dear, I've been holding it in for the entirety of this video. Excuse me.